Namaste and welcome to Anchor the Light. And this is Monday morning. I hope all of you had a fantastic weekend. So before we start, let's ask for divine blessing, shall we? To the divine supreme God, divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Tawakoksui Mahaguru Jameling, we humbly ask for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your compassionate, purifying light, and soothing, healing energy. We thank you in full faith. And so it is. Right. So greetings. Hope all of you are doing well. And uh, the lesson today, as we always try to share something useful, spiritual teachings that can be applied to our lives uh, to manifest the spiritual practice that we're doing. And so uh, one of the things that most people struggle with is the ability to say when what needs to be said and don't say what <laughs> doesn't need to be said. So the Chinese proverb we're drawing on is as simple as think before you speak, but do not speak all that you think. You go, what? Think, <laughs> think before moving mouth, but doesn't mean that everything that you're going through your head comes out of your mouth. Now, why is this important? <clears throat> How many times have we, um, oh, okay, just fix the volume here, one second. All right, so just fix the volume here. Now, let's do this again. Okay, think. <laughs> think before you speak, but do not speak all that you think. How many times have we struggled with something goes to our mind and <laughs> verbal diarrhea, <laughs> right? And then afterwards you go, oh, I couldn't, uh, I shouldn't have said that. And... It goes back to what the Lord Buddha taught many years ago. Of course, it's part of the Eightfold Path. You have right viewpoint, right thought, right speech, and then right action. Now, you will notice right thoughts came before right speech. And right viewpoint came before right thoughts. So, right thoughts, right uh, right, wait, right viewpoint, right thoughts, right words, right actions, uh, right livelihood, and so on and so on. Now, it all starts with right viewpoint. Now, you could say, oh, yeah, I just have to control what I say. No, it starts with first your viewpoint. Without right viewpoint, you would not know how to think. You would not know, you would not know what to say. True? So right viewpoint means the ability to first observe what is going on. What's going on? You know, when a person starts crying, screaming, yelling, or when a person's happy, as you're observing this, you observe first, ah, what's actually happening? That way you know, oh, okay, let me analyze this, what's going on, before you say something. True? Not true. <laughs> right? Oftentimes what happens when something's going on, immediately we react. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or you start shooting your mouth, and then you go, oh, that's not uh, appropriate. So it first starts with right viewpoint. So when you're looking at a certain situation, when let's say you walk into a conversation, three, four people talking, instead of going, oh, yeah, and you hear one person talk and you just open your mouth right away, no, you observe. Uh, this person says uh, there's a certain crisis at home, uh, there's a certain crisis at work, oh, uh, they just had a wonderful weekend. You just observe first, uh-huh, what's going on here, what's going on here, mm -hmm. You know, it's like what they say, you walk into a room, you try to read the room before opening your mouth. True. If you're a speaker, you know, how, how many times have I been uh, invited to, to speak at different, uh, you know, events? I would first read the room. I don't just go in, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> right? Well, what I have to say, what I have to say. No, before you open your big mouth, you first have to say, you have to think, hmm, what is my audience? What is my audience going through? What is it I can say to address their needs and wants? So that involves what? Observation. From this observation, you form a viewpoint. Like, oh, I actually already read the room. I read the people in it. All right, let's think about this. Hmm. All right, this person's going through a lot of emotional pain. Uh, what On what perspective are they coming from? Or this person screaming and yelling at you. The first thing you ask is, hmm, okay, they must be going through some stuff. 
Uh, is it because they had a bad day? Is it because they got hurt? Is it because they're angry with me? Why are they angry? All this is a processing very quickly. So with right viewpoint comes right thinking. From there, you will decide what to say and how to say it. Pragmatic spirituality. Because some people say, well, you know, you just always have to be honest. Like my, my teacher said, it has to be pragmatic. Uh, it has to be uh, it has to be mature type of honesty. It cannot be like, well, you know, what I say is true anyway. I don't have any filters. I just say what's true. Yeah, right. What's that gotten you? Most likely, a lot of problems. You see, one of the ways you know a person spiritually developing is the ability to observe before open mouth. <laughs> True? Think about it. And you cannot, <laughs> you cannot say the right words if you did not think about it carefully. You cannot think about it carefully if you did not have right viewpoint. So when I read this Chinese proverb, I started meditating on it. I go, how many times have we regretted we opened our big mouth? And when you say something, <laughs> you cannot unsay it. When a person is in front of you, you start saying, you are a piece of crap. You do this, you do that. You cannot, when it's done, you go, oops. You cannot go rewind. You know, as they say, a bell that's rung cannot be unrung. True? Done. You cannot say, uh, oops, I should not have rung the bell. I take it back. Yeah, right. <laughs> Make sense? That's why one of the things my teacher used to always say is, do not engage in useless conversations. Do not engage in useless conversations. When you engage in useless conversations, the mouth, the, the brain, the heart, whatever you want to call it, is not engaged. It's just like they say something, you say something, blah, 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 it's just verbal diarrhea left and right. Now, one of the things I always get in trouble with, me personally, is uh, I go to a family party with the family. I come home, my wife goes, what's wrong with you? I go, what do you mean, what's wrong with me? He barely said anything to anybody. Uh, before I could say this, she would say, you could talk on stage for days on end, from morning to night, hours and hours, five, ten, you know, hours a day, and we were at the family party, you barely said anything to anybody. You were just quiet. I go, they're talking about useless stuff. You know, they talk about, it's just like, somebody says something, this person says something, he goes into, I'm just watching him going, this is a complete waste of time. I mean, not all of them, but I'm just saying, <laughs> sometimes you're in front of people, you're just useless. Or, you know, you, that's why people go to the bar, they talk, they talk, they have verbal diarrhea. I'm going, no wonder people have problems. You know, some of you have heard, um, I think the Lord Je Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In other words, when you open your mouth, it reveals what's inside so if what comes out is just verbal diarrhea, just blah, 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 like that, it shows that what's inside is dirty. Make sense? So why is this important to, to understand? Because oftentimes we just say, well, I'm a free spirit. I just say what I think. Mm -hmm. How's that gotten you? See, one of the reasons why certain spiritual practitioners try to practice silence it's not so that, oh, okay, so I don't open my mouth and be quiet. No, it's not. It's to give the soul an opportunity for introspection. Because if you're constantly blah, 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 over, over and over again, there's no time for the soul to observe. Hmm, are these thoughts, remember we shared this with what the Lord would have said, are these thoughts, are they true? Are they necessary to spend time with it? Is it kind? Is it uplifting and helpful? So from there, what comes out of our mouth is, hmm, before we say this, 
Is it true? Is it necessary? Is it kind and uplifting? Yeah, but you don't understand. This person talking to me starts screaming, yelling, and upset. If I don't say anything, they're going to think, uh, you know, I'm giving in or I'm a victim. Okay, that's why I said you think. So if that person is screaming, yelling, you observe. Uh, this person's really upset. Hmm. So what would be the appropriate approach? If they, are they upset, screaming, yelling, because they're going through a lot of pain, so maybe I should use compassion and try to just listen, let them release all their crap, <laughs> get rid of it, and then do self-healing after. At least, you know, they feel better because they've been drawn, they've been, uh, what do you call this? They have been suppressed for too long or repressed for too long. Is that what's going on? Or this person is just being a verbal bully, and if I don't say anything, they think I accept it. So maybe the appropriate thing to say is, just tell them, stop, I'm not going to stand for this. Get the idea? Because some of you have this perception, yeah, if, if I'm silent, I'm just showing weakness. No, it's the appropriate time to say something, what to say, and how to say it. So if it's a first situation where the person is going through a lot of emotional pain, you observe it, uh, this person had a bad day, they're stressed out of their mind, that's why they're angry, upset, I happen to be the first person they see, so they're emotionally using their mouth <laughs> to expel, maybe I should just let them release it and just at least understand it from a viewpoint of, uh, I'm trying to help this person, and then afterwards offer some uh, helpful words. Maybe it's the right thing to say. So you say, okay, okay, okay. Uh, then you use the proper words. I know what you're going through. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, maybe I can help you. Maybe you thought, based on the viewpoint, you observe them. Uh, this is the appropriate thing to do. So you say what needs to be said. If it's the second situation where the person is just a verbal bully and <laughs> doing <laughs> all this stuff, you know, just like to uh, just take over conversation, make everybody feel bad, you go, hmm, if I do this, then that person thinks it's okay to verbally abuse me. I will not stand for it. Okay, so what's the proper thing to do? Hmm, I should tell them to stop. I should tell them to do this. Uh, this is the tone I should use. And I said, if necessary, I should walk away. Okay, see, this is processing at the same time. And you go, okay, enough. I don't want to hear any of this anymore. What you're saying is hurtful. I don't agree with you, so... Until you can calm your mind and your emotions, we'll talk some other time. Then you leave. It takes that time of processing. That shows that the soul, listen carefully, it always goes, goes back to it. It shows that the soul can use the will to control the mind, control the emotions, and control the body that has the mouth to talk. And similar situation. If whatever scheme, person screaming, yelling, you go, let me think about this. Okay, the viewpoint, they're coming from the right viewpoint. Uh, maybe it was my mistake in the first place. So as difficult it is for my pride, but I did screw up. So the right thing to say is sorry and just apologize. So with that, you open your mouth, you apologize. Make sense? Now, most people... You know, especially the ones that are not in the spiritual path, what happens? Somebody says something, get triggered. Oh, yeah? Done. It escalates. How many times has it happened in our lives where without thinking, without processing, without observing what's going on, we just open mouth. And later on you go, yeah, but you know, it escalated. I couldn't help it. I said this, they said that, and I could not back down. It's too late. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly the point. See, right now, all of you are giving me good responses. Oh, yeah, I understand. I'll never do that. Mm -hmm. You know why? There's no pressure. We're just discussing. But when that pressure is in front of you, how many of us could actually be able to spiritually step back, observe, process, think, feel, and say the right words? Hey, you know, I'm watching some of you, some of your responses. It's very easy. Oh, yeah, you know, I'm a loving person. I just forgive. I let go. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. Of course, in a class, when everybody's talking about spirituality, anybody can say the right thing. The question is, if the pressure is in front of you, can you keep it together? That's it. It's very simple. The lesson is actually quite simple. It all goes back to soul mastery. Everything does. Everything we're doing here, left, right, one, two, three, four, it all goes back to the same thing. 
who's in control of your life? Is it your body? Is it your emotions or your thoughts? Or is it the soul that is observing and using the body, the emotions, and the thoughts as its instruments to interact with the world? The, the explanation we always use, the metaphor. The musician uses the musical instrument to produce either noise or music. When noise is produced, you can say, well, it's the piano's fault. No, it's your fault. Admit it. Because the minute you start blaming, guess what happens? Those blaming thoughts and emotions build up. It becomes the cloud. It becomes the program that the soul just basically gives into. And when that soul gives into that, here's what happens. Somebody figures out how to trigger you. They know how to offend you, so that what happens? <clears throat> they control you. In one of the earlier lessons, we said, when you get easily offended, the person who offends you or the people who offend you, they control you, period. Simple as that. Listen to what I said again. When one is easily offended, whoever is offending them, Controls them. So you go back, oh, you don't understand. I have this person. They just know what to say to trigger me. Yeah, exactly. They control you. Period. No excuses. I don't want that. Then don't. <laughs> don't. When I start screaming, yelling, saying things that are hurtful, step back. Well, not physically, of course. You step back. Observe. Ah, this person's trying to do this to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I will not let them. That's it. Super simple. I didn't say easy. I said simple. You see, there's a difference. Simple and easy. Simple means the steps are clearly defined. One, two, three, four. Easy means the ability to do it. The, the, it what's the level of uh, difficulty? Very easy, not so easy, difficult. But the steps are simple. You know, someone who always triggers you, gets you upset, and what happens? I can't help it. I just have to scream at them and curse them. Well, you just said it yourself. You could not control your body, your emotions, and thoughts. So, you have two choices. Choice one, keep living like you do and keep suffering. <laughs> keep letting them control you. That's one choice. If that's the case, you're wasting your time here. You might as well not watch this and listen and meditate because it's a complete waste of time. You're not producing any results. Or number two, you go, okay, I'll stop it. I'm not going to let that happen again. So next, situ next situation, that a person is hurtful and, and trying to trigger me, I'll step back, observe, and change the way I think, change the way I feel, so it changes what I say. Period. Done. That's it. If you take this lesson and practice it every day, I guarantee you, within a week, your life changes. You start noticing, oh, wow, you start noticing people. You start noticing the way they think, the way they feel, they act. You can walk into a conversation when four or five people are talking, and you just observe. Oh, this person is really enthusiastic about their new car. This person is really upset about their job. This person is just, you just it's just like you sit there, you just get to observe everybody. And once you get to observe, you go, uh huh, this is what this person is going through, this is what I have to say. This is what person is going through, this is what I have to say. This person, I leave them alone because uh, they love to suffer. Uh, <laughs> whatever, you just observe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you get to be the master of your own world. Now you go, okay, I get it. Are you sure? It's not only. Verbal, because these days, what you call verbal expression or speaking is not only through moving your vocal cords. It's also through, also through what? That's why it's so easy to type. Social media. You know, you, you, you say something, people say, oh, I don't believe in that, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's easy because you're hiding behind your computer. Can you say that when you're the first in front of you? Most people can't. 
It's easy to just sit there, ah, you know, I'm a holy person, I'm this, I'm that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Try saying it in my face. <laughs> See if you can do it. That's exactly why people have problems. Oh, no, don't call it problems. It's called challenges. No, tell it like it is. It's a problem. You don't fix it, it's a problem. It's not a challenge. I understand why people use the word challenge so that, hey, it's a challenge so I can make it better. Unfortunately, it's been used so much that they take what's going on in their life that should be fixed. It's just a challenge. So, but, you know, it takes time. So they don't do anything about it. If it's a problem, we better fix it. So it all starts with what? You're going to say, get so bored with me saying this over and over again. Remember who you are. You are the soul, the spirit yourself, what you are. You are not the body, not the emotion and thought. You're not this anger. You're not this verbal diarrhea. You're not all these thoughts and emotions being, being, being dumped on you or thought of you. You're not any of these. And where do you come from? You come from the universal soul. You come from God. God is pure and powerful. That is our, that's your true essence. And guess what? The easiest way or the shortest way to get there is do your regular meditation. Why meditation? Of course, the appropriate type of meditation, because when you're meditating, what are you doing? You're quieting down the room, you're calming your emotions, you're emptying your mind to do what? To know who the I really is. So, step one, understand what is not the I. After you remove what's not the I, what's left is I. Once you realize I, then you affirm your, uh, you affirm your, your position in the universe, then you go, I am. That's it. Now you're in control. I am. I'm not this anger. I'm not these emotions. I'm not these thoughts. I'm not these triggers. None of this is I. Because I am the speech of self. I control what comes out of my mind, my speech, and my actions. That's it. Very, very simple. So, before we do our meditation, a quick test for you. After, we, you know, you do your meditation and switch your practice, just do an inventory for the last few months. Have you been less reactive? Have you been able to stay in control of what you think, what you feel, what you do, even when the pressure is high? Have you been able to stay calm? Or somebody post something before you, oh yeah! <laughs> Which one is it? Now, there's a certain drawback. <laughs> a certain negative side effect. Well, not negative. There's a certain side effect. The side effect is people who don't understand what you're doing will think you don't care. Just because you're not having as much drama as they're having, they think, oh, you don't care, you're this, you're that, because they don't understand. You're just simply observing and deciding, deciding what is the appropriate think, thinking to do, what, are, not, what appropriate thoughts to have, what appropriate speech to say, and what appropriate, appropriate things to do. So, initially, people won't understand you. They go, hey, how come you're so cold, man? Or how come you don't show that you're angry, upset? How come you're not panicking like everybody, everybody does? Of course, then you have to use the right words. You say, well, you know, I understand what's going on. Um, I just feel that putting my energy into something that's not productive uh, is only going to make things worse. So, uh, whatever. You decide what you want to say. But that's one of the drawbacks. And I've encountered this several times. People say, hey, how come you're so calm? You know, you should be angry. You should upset. You should be jumping up and down. Remember? I'm thinking. If they go on that, I go, um. What goes through my mind is like, yeah, because it's a complete waste of time. It's not productive. Make things escalate. But that's not what I'm going to say. Because if I say that, these people will get upset. I go, um, well, I'm just uh, considering what the options are. That's it. <laughs> okay? So this is a powerful lesson today. I have to learn it many times. I'm still learning it. If you just came aboard, I highly recommend you rewind and watch it again. I wish I knew these teachings 30, 40 years ago. 
then life would have been much easier. You know, sometimes we just type because somebody says something, oh, yeah. Doing this and doing like this without thinking is the same. <laughs> it's just there's lag time before they answer, you know, when it's online. And you're not seeing their facial expression. But as far as processing information, it's the same. Okay? So the lesson today, just to reiterate, then we'll do our meditation. Think before you speak, but do not speak all that you think. So step one, when you're in a situation, step one, what is step one? As Lord Buddha said, right viewpoint. Read the room. Observe what's going on. Look at each person. What are they going through? Why are they saying what they're saying? Or why are they acting like what they're acting? That's step one, right viewpoint. After you observe it, the Lord Buddha said in Eightfold Path, after right viewpoint is right thoughts. Right thought means, hmm, what's actually going on? Let me process this. Okay, this person is going through a lot of pain. That's why they're saying this. Uh, this person is uh, needing a little attention. That's why they said this. So, so you observe, 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 process the data. Next comes right speech. Right speech, you say, ah, this person is going through a lot of pain, and that's why they're screaming, ye ye yelling at you. Okay, say words of compassion, forgive, whatever. The next one, ah, that person's just being a bully. Hmm, okay, that person, I should just uh, stand my ground and not, don't let them push me over. And then from there, right, right, right action and so on and so on. Very, very simple. None of this excuse like, I can't help it, I got sucked into it. It does happen, but as you spiritually develop, it should become less and less and less. That is what you call soul mastery. The soul is always in control, or at least try to. You know, when you're on the piano and it comes out noise, you cannot say, but my fingers tapped the wrong keys. Who controlled the fingers? I did. <laughs> Make sense? That's it. Teaching very simple. Extremely powerful. Rewatch this, study it again. That's one of the reasons why. Let me just finish with this. I know it's a longer lesson. That's why I noticed when I was with my teacher, Grandmaster Chokok Sui, he only speaks when it's needed. Literally. We, we could be in the car, we could be an hour's drive, he'll speak 10, 15 minutes, and he just talk about things that are important. Things that are not important, you just stay quiet. No idle words. You know, some people, they just talk to move air, <laughs> to create sound. You know why? Because the aura is so filled with uh, negative thought forms, stress, and positive thought, everything mixed together. So because of that, those affect the eye. And so what happens is, since there's so much internal noise, to overcome that noise, they speak. So, your ability to decide what to say, when to say it, is a reflection of how clean our internal condition is. That's that. Shall we? Be worthy crown. Let's ask for blessings first to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother. To all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Tsuha Hoksui, Mahagu Jameling, we thank you for divine light, divine love. Thank you for compassionate, purifying light and soothing healing energy. Thank you for blessing us the ability to regulate our minds, our emotions, our actions. So it is. In full faith, so be it. Okay, ready? Put your hand like this. Be aware of your heart and your crown, especially your crown. I am that. I am. I'm not the body. I'm not the emotion. I'm not the thoughts. I am the soul that controls the body, the emotions, and thoughts. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, and divine power. I am that, the soul, the spiritual self. Just be still. Affirm your dominance over the mind, the emotions, and the body. I am control the mind and the thoughts. I control the feelings and emotions. I control the body's actions and movements. 
I am the thinker, the feeler, and the mover. Has been and always is. I am that, the soul, the spiritual self. I am one and connected to my higher soul. I am one and connected to the divine spark, the divine spirit in me. I am a child of God, meaning we, we keep trying, we still screw up, because we're still children, but we're learning. We are children of God, we are one with God, we are one with all. There's only oneness. Just be still. We are one. Now open your hands in blessing. We'll do the meditation twin hearts as taught to us by my teacher, Grand Master Tohok Sui. So be aware of your heart in your hands. Fill the earth with beautiful pink light. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there's hatred anywhere in the world, within me, outside of me, let me sow unconditional love. Where there's injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there's doubt, let me sow faith. Where there's despair, let me sow hope. Let's recall people we know going through difficult times in their life. May they be blessed with hope and with faith in a better tomorrow. So be it. Where there's darkness, let me sow light, sadness, joy. Just be aware of your heart, your hands, fill the earth with peace, with love, with a spirit of forgiveness, with hope and with faith, with light and lots of joy. So be it. So be it. May all be blessed. Bless the people around you, your family, your friends, people you work with. Bless them with pink light. Bless them with peace and with love. And the ones that we have certain conflicts with, bless them with love and forgiveness. So be it. So be it. I'll be aware of your heart. Take a deep breath. Bring that love to your crown. Exhale. Just stay there. Be still. The crown is filled with so much golden light. Just let that golden light from your crown flow down through your hands and bless your home. All the people in your home, your workplace, the city you live in, the country, the entire earth. Fill the entire earth with beautiful golden light. From the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and with kindness. May all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. May all be blessed without exception. So be it. So be it. Blessings be to all. Now, gently be aware of your heart and your crown simultaneously. Take a deep breath. Exhale, imagine golden light even brighter than before, pouring out of our hands and filling our homes, our cities, our countries, all the countries in the world, especially the ones who are uh, at war or having challenges with their economy, places that are having calamities and famine. Fill the earth with intense golden light. From the center of the heart of God, through my spirit, through my soul, through my entire being, may all beings of the earth, in the higher worlds, middle worlds, even the lower worlds, beings of the inner worlds and outer worlds, may all beings in every dimension, without exception, be blessed with God's unconditional love and kindness. May all be blessed with inner peace, inner healing, and outer healing. May all be healed of any pain, sorrow, or suffering they might be going through. So be it. So be it. If you know any loved ones or family members going through a lot of suffering and pain, fill them with golden light. May they be healed physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. So be it. So be it. May all be blessed with understanding, harmony, goodwill, 
and the willingness to do good. May all be blessed, so be it. May all be blessed. So be it. Now lower your hands. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Now just imagine a beautiful golden flame floating above your head. Be aware of the love within your heart. Send a stream of love from your heart up, up to the crown and into the golden flame. Ah. And stay there. Just be still. Just look at that golden light. And listen. Om. to just drift deeper and deeper into that golden flame. Be still. Be aware of the inner stillness. And just simply let go. Now. Gently, slowly, very gently and slowly, come back to your physical body. Gently move your fingers and your toes. Gently and slowly raise your hands again. Picture the people you love in your life, people who need healing, need blessings, fill them with golden light. May they be blessed with good health, with much happiness, with abundance and prosperity, and spiritual oneness. So be it. Bless people who are in need. Bless them with golden light. Bless your job, your business, your career with success, with progress, with prosperity and advancement. So be it. May all be blessed. Blessings be to all. So be aware of your feet, the base of your spine. Let's get grounded. Project golden light down into the earth. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth and all beings, so be it. To the Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, thank you. To all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Chokok Sui, Mahago Jumeng, thank you in full faith, and so it is. All right, I hope you enjoyed the meditation. Uh, I wish I got this. Um, it was short, but if you really practice the first part of realizing you're not the body, not emotion, not thoughts, you're the soul, then you get to realize it is really the soul that's meditating. That alone for a lot of people go, allow them to go deeper into peace and stillness. All right. Now, 
one thing that um, is very interesting, and you've heard this from many spiritual teachers, even from the ones who are not supposed to be spiritual teachers, but motivational speakers, uh, which is actually on a higher level, they're the same. Um, last week I was with Tony Robbins, uh, with they do destiny. And I remember he said, trade your expectations for appreciation. In other words, whatever your expectations are, that cause you, you know, if things might go well, not go well, your worries, your fears, change them for appreciation. Another word for appreciation is gratitude. Fear and gratitude cannot occupy the same spiritual space within you. You realize that? Fear, worry, cannot occupy the same spiritual space, mental, emotional space within us. So gratitude gives us the ability to appreciate what we have. So that said, if you haven't joined us yet, let me just show it to you the ones on the, uh, we have the 31 days of gratitude. Every single day, we have a meditation. Sunday is gratitude to our creator. Monday, gratitude for the spiritual essence within us. Tuesday is for good health. Wednesday is for the teachers and mentors in our life. Thursday is for the success and prosperity. Friday is the people and relationships. And Saturday are the life lessons that we had learned and we have learned from. It's going on. It's online uh, on masterco.org. I think in panicking.com too. You just press play. So every single day you have a special meditation to do. So this gratitude meditation, we do this every December. You know, because a lot of times you say, hey, let's celebrate the holidays. A lot of people are lonely. A lot of people don't know anybody to celebrate with. Even, they don't even have to be a Christian, but it's just the energy of Christmas, right? You know, everybody's celebrating, giving gifts, and you go, oh, nobody loves me. So what happens? People, come to, people have a tendency to get depressed. Or they feel what the future holds. Yet we are so blessed, we have a tendency to focus on what we don't have rather than focusing on what we have and how grateful we should be for them. So that's why we have the 31 days uh, meditation challenge, gratitude medita for, for gratitude, all right? So namaste, everyone. We will see you in the second session. I apologize. We went way over time, uh, almost 50 minutes. We will see you uh, seven hours and 10 minutes from now for Anchor Light Part 2. God bless. Take good care. See you soon.